Bill, a lot going on out there in La La Land, mostly revolving around Lonzo Ball. How much of a distraction has he been with this team and in that locker room? You know, within the locker room, it's not been a problem at all. I mean, obviously, everything comes back to his dad, who's kind of in the headlines you know, for one thing or another seemingly every day. But Lonzo Ball doesn't talk about it. He always says the right things. His teammates have, have, have seemed to have bought into what he brings to the court. We've heard players, Kyle Kuzma has said repeatedly that people want him to go out there and be a Hall of Famer right away. And that's not going to happen with a 19-year-old uh, rookie. Or he's 20 now, I should say. But a 20-year-old rookie in the NBA, you know, the NBA doesn't come easily for people. Um, usually, uh, unless your name is Kyle Kuzma, apparently. But he's really, um, you know, he's under a microscope that is something that most players can't even relate to. And you know, I, I think that with, with social media and the, and the fact that this is 2017 where everything is so closely scrutinized, you could easily argue that no player has faced this level of scrutiny and this kind of microscope ever just because of the day and age we're in. Bill, Sam Mitchell here. You must work for the Lakers PR department because you're making excuses <laughs> already for Alonzo Ball. I'm sitting here listening to the coach, Luke Walton, saying Rick is coming to the league and sit and learn all these things, but yet he's starting and he's struggling. I obviously don't have a problem with rookies starting and struggling, but when you look at his struggle, what's the fine line the Lakers have to walk between? You have a lot of other young players who are playing well, and Alonzo continues to struggle, and he's playing all these minutes. At some point, can this start to fracture that locker room a little bit? Because at the end of the day, the NBA is about earning your minutes. Yeah, I think I think the key here is that the guys who are going to be with Lonzo Ball in the long haul are young players like him. It's Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, guys who know that, uh, you know, again, Kyle Kuzma kind of notwithstanding, but Brandon Ingram went through this last year, and he wasn't given the keys to the franchise right away, but he did play a lot of minutes. He played late in games. He struggled. And really everybody else in that locker room, I mean, are on expiring deals. I mean, Corey Brewer is not going to be back, uh, you know, as, as a key player of this team. Contavious Caldwell Pope's making $18 million this year. He's probably not going to come back. Brooke Lopez is on an expiring deal. So I think most people kind of understand the situation, which is that this is Lonzo Ball's team for better or worse. But you're right, Sam. I mean, he has not been good this year. I mean, as a, strictly judging his on-court performance, he has not been good. But the Lakers really can't walk back everything they said in the offseason and in the preseason. Magic Johnson called him the face of the franchise, you know, the day he was drafted. And since then, um, it's been made very, very clear he's going to be given every opportunity to succeed or fail. But for now, I mean, there's no, like I said, no walking back everything that's been said. You can't suddenly you know, bring him off the bench to start the season. That ship has sailed. And so now they, they have to ride him. They have to ride him, and they have to hope that this turns around and that the, the, the great moments, which of which there have been some, there was the triple-double in Milwaukee, became the youngest player to record a triple-double, the 29-point game in Phoenix. If they need to start hoping those, those, those moments become a little more frequent and start outweighing kind of the across-the-board frustration because he is not shooting the ball well. He is um, oftentimes disappearing on the court. You know, we've heard a lot about his defense, but, I mean, he's not – He's, he's been protected on defense. He has not been guarding opposing point guards. So I think the reality is that this has been a disappointing start to the season, but not one that he can't come back from. But I think also in contrast to what you said, you do have good young players. Brandon Ingram has taken a step so far this year, and Kyle Kuzma looks like you know an all-rookie team uh, first-teamer. So in contrast to those guys, uh, Lonzo's struggles are really, are really um, apparent. Hey, Bill. Drew Gooden here. My question to you is this, and it's a tough question because you live in L.A. We out here in Atlanta, so you might get a more trouble answering this than us. Um, I love it. Okay. Now, just going back to Luke Walton's uh, comments about younger guys having to watch older guys prepare and kind of take the steps, the proper steps of becoming a pro and becoming a veteran in this league. Do you think this is an outcry for Jordan Clarkson to start right now? Well, I mean, it, it, whether or not there's an opportunity or not, I mean, I, I can't see it happening. We asked Luke just the other day if, if maybe he would he would put Lonzo on the bench and let him, again, kind of learn the way he'd said he, he would. But um, there's a couple things here. One, the Lakers have always seen Jordan Clarkson as a sixth man. They've really tried to groom him to be a sixth man. They wanted him to learn how to play that, that role from Lou Williams last year. And he's really embraced it this year, and he's had a 25-point game, 20-point uh, game. Uh, I think he's around 16 points this year. So I, he's obviously playing really well off the bench. He's obviously outplaying Lonzo Ball, but I think the Lakers really like him in that role. And I also think that if they take if they take Lonzo out of the starting lineup, they're very concerned about the message that sends and what that does to his psyche. Um, they, they have built him up as a superstar, and if they start treating him as anything other than a superstar, um, I think there's a fear that that could have negative ramifications. 
so many onions, so many layers to this onion that is Lonzo Ball. The fight the other All day the with, the Phoenix, with the Phoenix Suns, okay, we have the footage of Lonzo Ball walking away. Then we hear about the, uh, the issue in the locker room of, okay, well, someone spoke to him about this. What have you seen with this team and in, in what happened here with Lonzo Ball and how the team has reacted to this? Yeah, I think it's different. For, a few years ago, if you go back and remember, the Lakers were actually in Phoenix, and Nick Young got into it with Alex Len and was surrounded by Suns players, and the rest of the Lakers just did not go bail him out at all. And the guy who got the most flack for it was Kendall Marshall, and Kendall Marshall was kind of on an island in that locker room because, well, he was running the other way to avoid the skirmish, and... Um, I don't think you're going to see that in this scenario. One, you have a lot more young guys, um, a lot more young guys who really are kind of still learning the etiquette of the league. And again, the Lakers have said, you know, it's been handled internally. We talked to him. He knows going forward kind of what the rules are and, and you know, how you need to you know, show up for a teammate. And, and that's that. But again, this isn't Kendall Marshall we're talking about. If, if it was somebody else, I think you would hear more public um, denouncements of that behavior. But because it's Lonzo Ball and because the Lakers have been very careful not to be critical of him, I don't think you're going to hear much else. Um, but I, I do think, I just I think this goes back to an overarching theme, that Lonzo Ball is really well-liked in the Lakers locker room. His teammates have bought into his style and to his personality. Um, I think that a, a, as the season goes on, that may, that there may be a bit of a distance with the older players, potentially. But so far, uh, you know, that hasn't been an issue, and those older players aren't going to be around next year if things go to plan for the Lakers who want to spend their money elsewhere. So I think, uh, I think for the most part that that's an incident that was probably a bigger deal externally for guys like us, but um, certainly one that did not go unnoticed in the Lakers' locker room.